I think I've found the ultimate AI powered vector graphic design tool. It's called Kittle. It's like Canva but with an upgrade powered by some really awesome AI tools. There's a lot you can do with this, but I'm gonna run through today how you can use it to create an AI vector logo, a t-shirt design, and a social media flyer using Kittle's AI powered editing suite. I also wanna mention Kittle are the sponsor of this video and there's a link in the description along with a discount if you'd like to check it out. Now I'm logged into Kittle and you can see up here, I have an expert plan and you do get some AI credits, but it is a full editing suite. And if you come down, there's actually a bunch of templates. You can also search, so like search for something like Japanese inspired. Then we get some pretty nifty templates, but we're gonna start from scratch. We're gonna start off by creating a vector logo using this tool. So one way to do that is to head up here to branding. So while I can just go up here and start a new blank project, I can also just go here to logos and I can see templates from there. So you can always pick one of these as a starting point and then make edits afterwards. But I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna click new project so we can start blank. This is where we choose an artboard size. So because we're dealing with the logo and print, I'm gonna change over to inches instead of pixels. So let's work on inches and we'll go say 10 by 10 inches and click create. And now we have an artboard here. So to show you just how powerful this is, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. There's a whole bunch of tools down here on the left you can see but we're gonna come down to Logo Generator to start from there. And I can start by describing my logo. I have a minimalist logo for a cafe called Stoic Coffee using an emblem of a stoic man, earthy tones. But if you don't have a good idea on what to prompt, you can always check out these little templates below and start with one of those instead. But I'm gonna stick with my prompt and hit Create Logo. Now you see I've got a few different options here. I really like this bottom left one. I'm going to add to the current project. Zooming out again, I can hold down space and just sort of drag this around. But you notice I have my artboard one over here and artboard two. I can actually add in different artboards to my project and have bits and pieces floating around. But for now, I'm going to stick with this artboard here. If I zoom in, the quality continues to be sharp because this is a vector object. So I have my emblem here. I have my text, and as with most text editors, I get all the usual options like font and size, alignment, I can take it off capitals, I can go in and edit the text as well, and I can make all these different changes to it to really customize and modify what I've perceived. I can even add a nice little arch to it if I want to add some effects like what you see here. So I basically decided to continue to customize or even change the text so we've got stoic at top, coffee at the bottom. I have full control over the final product. I can change the color of the text, and this is basically what we've ended up with. Now you can take this logo as it is, but I'm gonna use it as a starting point. First of all, I'm going to delete this emblem because maybe I want a different emblem. I'm gonna come over to image generator. And much like any other image generator, I can type in a prompt, pick a certain style. But what I think is really cool is vector styles here. I can click show all. There is a few vector styles here I can work with to create my logo. I'm gonna stick with this one here and describe a new emblem for my logo. I have a minimalist head emblem of a stoic man with a beard. Although I'll make it 9 to 16 to make it taller, I hit generate image, and now I have this emblem. But there is a problem. The background's quite dark. This is also quite dark because it's in black. But because it is a vector emblem, I can change the object color and I can even choose one of the document colors. One thing I can also do is choose the same color background and maybe instead I add a border and let that sort of fill in. So I have a few different options there and of course the border weight, the border color I can change to more of this coffee color here. And I've basically got the beginnings of a logo. So that just shows you how powerful it is and this is a vector design. I can come in, there's a few other things down the left here. So I can go down to elements if I want to. And much like Canva, we get some basic shapes. We can have some ornaments. I can search for coffee. So I have this little coffee cup symbol. I can add that in there. Change the color again. If you're inclined, you can pop something like that down the left here. I can also copy, paste, and paste that in place. And you can see I've got a nice little guideline here showing that it lines up with the other one. So that's a great way to create a nice start beginner logo using Kittle, and it is entirely vectorized. So now if I wanna download this, I go up here to download. 
is PNG, JPEG. There's also SVG and PDF. So if I choose PDF, I can combine the artboards into one file. I can remove the background. So I'm gonna leave the background in first time and go download. So I've downloaded this zip file and extracted the PDFs from it. And you can see I get three PDFs with each artboard. We were working with artboard two. I opened that up. I've got a vector PDF of the logo I created using Kittle. However, with the background, while it may be useful, maybe I need one without a background. And don't forget, I can also just simply switch this to JPEG and download any of these file formats. I can go back to PDF, remove the background, download. We get our PDF and it does have a white background, but that means it's transparent. If I bring it into a design program, I can input that PDF and position it over the top of a background and it won't clash. You can also do a transparent PNG, but with this PDF, it becomes a vector we can supply to any designer or marketer to use. So we're back in Kittle again, and don't forget any time I can come in, edit this. At the moment, the project is untitled, so I'll call it Stoic Coffee Logo, and now it's been saved. What's also cool is in come up here to Mockup. I'm gonna choose Artboard 2. Create Mockup is picked a shirt, there's the right color and I can actually create a mock-up of this on a t-shirt. I've also got some other products down here as well that I can try, such as a hoodie. And it's already picked that color of the hoodie and I can move this around, I can make it big, I can pop it up up here and we can start to create mock-ups. So that way when we create these logos, even if you create the logo outside of Kittle, you could import it and use this as a mock-up creator, which is really powerful. But going back to the editor, Coming back to the editor, you notice we have artboards one, two, and three. At any point, I can click on the name of the artboard, change the settings, so the size and the background color, but I'm just gonna right click and also delete because we don't need these artboards. And finally, because it's saved, I can go back out by clicking the little K symbol here. I can go to my projects. I have a few there, but Stoic Coffee logo is right here, so I can come back to it at any time and continue editing. So that's how we can create a logo using Kittle. Next, we're gonna look at designing shirts using Kittle. So once again, I'm gonna go into the apparel section and I'm gonna type in something that I wanna see. So I like the Japanese inspired stuff. I'm gonna type in Shogun and we get these really cool designs that we can basically work with straight up. I really like the look of this one. So I'm gonna start with a template this time and go from there. So you can see, we've got this really awesome design and there are a bunch of really cool designs on the website. You can go through, check them out, and you can just simply alter these as they've already got a lot of design value to them. But if I decided to want to change this one, I can change the text quite easily. I double click, type in something else, it's like Budo, and it maintains all of the stylistic changes, where it says Samurai, maybe I type in Warrior, and I can change any of this here. Maybe I have a website called Budo Warrior. I go, I type in budowarrior.com. Not sure if that's an actual website or not. We've got these little graphics here that we can grab, manipulate little stars. And you can see the stars have a different color. I can change those colors to yellow if I wanted to, or alter that, maybe make it like more of a brighter red. And same with this here, and go for that bright red this time. And I can basically just make alterations to this design. What if I want to change this image? This image isn't too bad, but I'm going to go for something a little different, maybe even a little bit simpler. So we have a few tools here, such as I can go into images and just search for Samurai here, not really getting what we want. So once again, we're gonna to go to our image generator to create something. I'm gonna come down to image styles and I really like this clip art style because I want it to have a bit of a cartoony feel. So I'm gonna go show all. We'll go for t-shirt graphic, which is perfect considering we're designing a t-shirt. I'm gonna type in a prompt, a red and navy evil Samurai Hanya style mask vector design. Hit enter. And now I have this helmet here. Now, the white background is obviously not what we want. So I can go AI background remover over here to cut that background out. One thing I want to point out though, if I zoom in, is that this is not a vector image. Now, to, to avoid confusion, I'm gonna click on this image here and delete it. And we're just sticking with this one for now. What I can do now is for one, I can upscale it, but I'm gonna go image vectorizer and I can choose how many colors I want. Now there's a few, there's more than one color here. We've got red, we've got blue, and we've got a few different shades. So I'm gonna go up to about, let's say nine colors just to be safe. Click vectorize. And now we have a vectorized image that we can use for our shirt. So we can print this at basically any size and not lose quality. I'm gonna move it into position about here. 
Now, there is one problem. The word warrior is sitting above the mask. So I can come down to my layers in the bottom right. And you see I have my illustration. We have a background here. We also have a texture, which I can turn off or on. Well, here where it says Samurai, because this originally said Samurai, that's the name of the layer, I can drag that above the illustration and now it sits above. Now there's one problem. I click on this mask. We've got this nice bright red here, which I really like, but the mask is more of a dull red color. Over here under Object Color, I can actually alter these colors here. So I can move it over to the red spectrum and actually alter the individual colors within the design. And with this pinkish red, I go straight for that bright red, maybe lighten it up a little bit. And now we're more in line with the rest of the image. And again, I can center on the page and we basically have a design here. Now, one thing I'm noticing here is that the B is coming lower than the O. So we can also make edits to that. So I come over here to transformation and click edit transform. And already I can take these markers and I can move this down until I feel it's a little bit more even or I can move this up if I feel it's a bit too full on. I can even take that curve a bit wider with these handles as you would any other kind of vector style curve. So that, that has sort of evened up the design just a little bit. And of course I can go into any of these other areas and add in various elements. I have images, not really suitable for what we're doing. But if I wanna try something different with the texture that's sitting over the top of it, I can go to textures, see what's available there and play around to see where which one I think looks best with the new design. Now keep in mind, if you're making mistakes while you're editing, you have your undo, you have your redo, and you can change the order with layers. And you've got all of your settings over here on the right for each individual object you select. This texture, I can click again, it might be a little full on, I can bring the opacity down. And don't forget at any point, we can come up to our mockups and I can, position our image on a shirt. That's one of the things I really like about this platform is the fact that you get to create these mockups that you can use to advertise your designs before you sell them. But coming back to the editor again, while we have the mockups, we can also go print. We can basically choose what we would like to print this on. So I go sweater and hoodie, and I can start to lay it out and even basically get this printed for myself while I kittle. But ultimately when we're done, I wanna come up here to download and because I want to put this onto some shirts, I'm going to remove the background. I'm going to go with, I can go with a PNG, but if the printer takes PDF, then I would go that way to keep your images as vectors. But we'll stick with PNG for now, since most of these platforms will work in PNG, but you get these really large images, 6,000 by 7,500. I hit download. And we'll get a nice high resolution PNG file, which when you zoom in, because it's vector is still sharp, very high quality. And remember, a PDF is still going to be better because you're going to get the PDF file. You can also go for a vector PDF if your printer supports them. Otherwise, if you have any issues with the PNG or the file, simply remove the texture as well to make sure you get a nice clean result. But now we're also going to create a social media image. So again, I come up here to social. And as before, I can choose say an Instagram post. And as I mentioned before, we get a whole bunch of different templates that we can start with. So to speed things up, I'm going to click on this one here, nice and simple. And already, as you know, we can go ahead and edit the text. And we saw this before, very easy, intuitive, and quick to do. And I don't like this background. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come down to my layers. And at the moment, these layers are grouped together. I'm gonna to click on the background and I'm just gonna delete it. Now I can add in another background. So I'm gonna go here to images. And if I want some kind of person, maybe I want some kind of fitness person, I'll search for fitness. We've already had this image. I could choose maybe this one, pop him in place. And I can go to the AI background remover and I'm able to cut him out. Now, the reason I want to do that is because I want to position him maybe over here, but I want to add a unique background. So this time I'll go back into my image generator over here. Our size is one to one. So we'll stick with one to one yet again, but again, you can change that aspect ratio if you want to. And I'm going to add in a prompt for a unique background and say gym outside, Aurora Borealis for something that's really unique. I'm gonna come down here and I can look at a few different styles. I'm gonna go though with photography. Now I wanna add DSLR photo for a bit of realism. I'm gonna click create image. And now we've got our gym image here. I'm gonna move it into position. And then I come down to our layers down here and I'm gonna move that image down the, the background. Now 
I would actually like to see the weights on this side and this empty side a little bit sort of more behind the guy here. So I click on the image and I have some options here. For one, I can duplicate it, I can crop it, I can remove things, I can delete it. But if I click on these, I get a whole bunch of more, more options here I can use. I'm gonna click flip horizontal and now we've got it around the other way. Now, as I've shown you before, I'm gonna go through and just sort of move a few things around, change some colors and reorder some things to get the image laid out a bit better. And then we're gonna add in a bit of a background behind this text. The one thing we can also do though, if I click on this text, there's some effects here. So I can add in like some bordering if I want to, which I don't think looks very good for this particular image, but I can add in a, a bit of a shadow, change the color to black. And again, we have things like, we can go back to our templates here at any time. I can add in more text and I have some some different bits and pieces here. I also want to mention if you want me to do a full in-depth tutorial of Kittle, I take the time to go through all the features, leave a comment below and I'll consider doing that in the future. And again, I can add in more photos, I can upload images if I want to, or I can go into my elements yet again and choose basic shapes. I choose a square and using those same settings on the right, I can change the color and then use the handles of the square itself to bring it to the right size. And again, I use my layers palette to drag it down so it's behind the guy and also behind the text. And I touch up this little bit of text here also just to get it to color match to the rest of the image. And now I'm gonna put a big call to action up here. So I'm gonna go in and add some text. So I can choose any of these layouts. So we've got summer sale. I think this will work in the top left pretty well. I'll make it white. Also, I'm going to ungroup it so I can remove some bits and pieces, add a drop shadow, even change some of the text color on sale and get it looking a little bit closer to what we need. And I'll add a little 50% off down here. So I'm gonna grab some more text and I'm just gonna add in a headline and I'm gonna type in 50% off. I'm gonna choose a different font. I'm gonna go alpha slab one because it's a nice thick font. I'll make it a bit bigger, pop it in position and maybe even grab that same green so it all marries up, pop the box behind it and then we've got our complete panel where we can see the text against the background. And now we've got our design ready to go. We can basically go up to the top, download a JPEG and it's ready to upload to Instagram or Facebook or whatever social media app we wanna put it to. But you can see just how powerful Kittle's editing suite is, especially considering the fact you can generate vector images and art right within its actual editor. And you can convert things to vector and you can use it like professional graphic design software contained entirely in the browser so you don't have to download a thing, just log in and start creating. Now, if you wanna check out Kittle, there's a 25% discount if you use the link in the description below and the coupon code WADEYT. That's 25% off for the first month or first year on all paid plans, both pro and expert for new users. And don't forget to leave a comment below if you want me to do a really in-depth workshop on Kittle's editor and AI tools. I wanna thank Kittle for sponsoring this video and I thank you for taking the time to watch the video. And if you like it, please consider giving it a like. Otherwise, thanks for watching again and have a great day.